thanks, thanks for attending our talk. Uh, today we are share about how we exploit the Qualcomm WLAN and the modem over the, way, over the air, and finally compromise the Linux kernel. Uh, about us, uh, we are the uh, security researchers from Tencent and Blade team. Uh, Tencent and Blade team uh, is founded by Tencent Security Platform Department in 2017. Uh, we focus on uh, security research in the areas of AIoT, mobile devices, cloud visualization, blockchain, and uh, ETC. <coughs> uh, this is the agenda. Uh, firstly, we will introduce some uh, related works. Uh, we know that uh, WLAN security is a hot topic in recent years. Uh, the known exploit on Broadcom Wi Fi ship is on 2017 and this year on malware. Today, our talk is about Qualcomm. As we know, uh, there is no public exploit on Qualcomm Wi Fi ship, so, how secure uh, is the Qualcomm uh, Wi Fi? There is a simple uh, illustration about the architecture of Qualcomm Wi Fi. Uh, there are two important things. Uh, the first one uh, is that uh, start from Snapdragon 835. The WLAN firmware is integrated into the baseband subsystem. So the WLAN and the modem firmware are wrong in the same processor now. The second thing is that you can see uh, in Qualcomm's uh, implementation, most of the function there is implemented in the Linux kernel driver named QCA CLD. Uh, there are plenty of vulnerabilities uh, in this driver. Uh, that is the well-known WLAN host vulnerabilities. Our talk is not about the WLAN host issues. It is about the WLAN firmware itself. Uh, we know that uh, there is no public talk on the Qualcomm WLAN firmware previously. So how about the security status? Uh, we will answer this question. Before we go into the details of WLAN and, and modern firmware, we need to introduce the debugger we use to debug the firmware. This is the key step for us to analyze the modern and WLAN. Uh, there are uh, modern boot authenticator and the modern images in file system. You can see uh, MBA.MBN is the MBA image. Modem.mdt and modem.bxx are modem images. These images have a specific format according to Qualcomm's official document. Like uh, application processor, modem processor also has its secure boot flow. The flow is like this. Uh, firstly, Linux kernel will load MBA and uh, modem images from file system to physical memory. The second, uh, Linux kernel will set the start physical address of MBA and uh, reset the modern processor. Modern PBL in ROM will verify the MBA image. If success, it will jump to the MBA code. Finally, MBA will read and verify modern images. If, if success, it will jump to the modern main code. Uh, the Peer boot function in Linux kernel describes the boot flow of a modem. Uh, it will load uh, mo MBA and the modem images to physical memory and then check MBA and the modem images to be verified and executed in modem processor. Linux kernel can restart the modem processor at any time and it will hit a peer boot function each time when restart. Uh, the vulnerability we use to bypass uh, the modern secure boot is a time of check, time of use bug. When MBA verifying modern images, it doesn't lock the physical mem memory region. Means that Linux kernel still can modify the modern images. So after MBA verified one image, Linux kernel can still modify it, which means that we have bypassed the secure boot check. Uh, the POC for the vulnerability is quite simple. There is the uh, diff, diff file of peer boot function. We just let the uh, peer reclaim mem function after we modify modem images. Uh, after we have ability to modify the modem images, we can inject debug server to modem side. 
uh, we injected a demonstrator to wait for commands from Linux side. The commands and the resu results will be exchanged using shared physical memory. Uh, we now can uh, issue debug commands to debug WLAN and the modern firmware. Uh, now we have the uh, debugger. We can analyze the modem and WLAN firmware much easier. And uh, Xilin will introduce the following details. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to introduce the reverse engineering and the vulnerability and exploitation of WLAN. And uh, finally, we'll get into the Linux kernel. Okay. Let's we use the architecture of Qualcomm WLAN. Uh, the WLAN is now in the base band subsystem and uh, is hexagon architecture, uh, not ARM architecture, it's hexagon architecture. So we can analyze it uh, and uh, if we controlled the WLAN, we have actually controlled the base band sub subsystem. Okay. Uh, here is a simple figure for the WLAN architecture. Uh, from the fig, we can see that the Qualcomm WLAN is not a full mark level firmware. Most of the function of w WLAN are implemented in the Linux driver. You can see here in the QCAC driver. Okay. That's leading to a smaller attack surface than the other vendors. The work to be done here in the firmware is called the offloader. You see the offload mic layer. Uh, the major attack surface is here in the offload handler. The offload handler is actually uh, a table, a function table. It will inspect the OTA packet and if interested in, we will pass the packet and do, and do some job. So the attack could happen here uh, when the offload handler handles the packet. So you can and analysis, okay. Give an example for how the Wi-Fi access point is displayed on the Wi-Fi list. So if you uh, turn on the UI and the setting and open the Wi-Fi, you will see a list of the wi access point, okay. Actually, when you turn turn on the Wi-Fi, the Android framework will issue command to the driver and the driver will command the firmware to scan the nearby Wi-Fi hotspot. Finally, the firmware will register two, two handlers into the handler table. When the other hotspot or access point send a packet, yes, if you have a uh, access point, it will send out beacons and other packets. So our handler will receive receive the data and the pass it. If into the management beacon, it will transfer it to the driver and finally we will notify the um, user space application so that you can see the SSID and uh, other informations. Okay. Okay. So now we have some basic things about the Qualcomm WLAN. Uh, let's start the reverse engineering. Uh, this is the firmware loaded by modern. Uh, this is the WLAN firmware. It will load by modern for this position and this is the distance simpler. And uh, this is the wonderful SDK provided by Qualcomm and uh, instruction reference for the hexagon architecture. Okay. Okay. So uh, the WLAN firmware has more than 8,000 functions. It's a difficult task to reverse these functions without any knowledge. Uh, luckily, Qualcomm have given us some hint. You can see the most useful thing is the string table. Uh, we can find a lot of function names. And uh, the other thing is the import function because the WLAN firmware is load, loaded by the modern as a shared library. So the WLAN use a lot of functions from the modern and leave the function names in the input function table. They are quite useful, the string table and the input function. Okay. The target we are going to reverse engineering is the offload handler. Uh, the merge attack surface is the offload handler. So the question is how to find the handler table. Uh, the answer is that you can 
first find the string from the string table, uh, that is this string, uh, non data offload, and then check the reference of the string to find the function name and find the fun function named the non data handler. Uh, you can see this is this is a big function. Actually, it's a it's a big loop, and uh, fetch the items in the handler table, and uh, then call the functions to do the job. Okay. So this is the uh, major attack surface. You can find the table here, and find the functions. Uh, this is the sample function. One of the functions looks like this. The most important thing is to find the data point. If you send the data. Uh, if you want to attack the W line, you first send the data. So how to find the data data, data flow? Uh, this is the entry, the one of the handler. You can see here, this is a data point. Uh all case five B, five A, five line, five eight. This is the data point. So you find this function and find the data point and analyze the uh, function and the source of the uh uh, data point, then you know how, what uh, is the function doing and handle vulnerabilities. Okay. Uh, I think this is the most important slide in this, this talk. You can find the function and find the data and handle vulnerability that you want. Okay. Okay. So, let's uh, start the exploitation. Uh, this is a load map. Uh, we are here. We can send out uh, some signals using the Wi Fi dongle. Or something else. Uh, we are here. We can send out the signals, Wi-Fi signals, and we are going to compromise the WLAN, and uh, then we are escape into modern, and uh, finally uh, we are into the Linux kernel. Okay, to compromise the for for Linux kernel. Okay, so before we go, let's check the uh, medication status. Of WM to set up an exploitation strategy. Okay. From the mitigation table, you can see that there are lots of mitigations. Uh, for example, the heap, heap have ASL. The address of the heap is not fixed. And the heap have protection heap cookie. So uh, the overflow on the heap is very difficult to exploit. And also, there are DEP, uh, you are unable to. Uh, jump into the data segment. Uh, also, you are unable to write to the code segment directly. If you want to do, to do so, you have to change the uh, memory attribution. Uh, okay. Also, there are frame limit, frame limit to protect the SP, the frame key to protect take the return address. Uh, so, uh, if you want to use some Technique like uh, ROP, ROP, uh, this doesn't work because the protection here. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are very lucky. The code ASL is not in enabled, so the code address is fixed, and the CFI is not enabled. So, if we, uh, although we cannot use ROP, we can use something called the uh, FOP, function oriented programming. That is, um, in the uh, gadget of the ROP, all the gadget is a uh, uh, function core, not a return core. Uh, return is a function core, not a function oriented programming. Okay? And uh, we are also very lucky the issue we found is in the global data area. That is, here, there is also low ASL. So the address of the data is also fixed. Okay? We know the address of the data, the what. Around the, the data address. Okay, let's see the detail of the vulnerability. Uh, it's a CVE 2019 10540. Okay, this issue has already been announced in the Android and the Qualcomm August security briefing and uh, has been patched. So, if you are interested in about the detailed information of the vulnerability, please check the security briefing in August 29. Okay. Uh, this issue has been mm, fixed already. Uh, uh, this issue in one of the offload uh, handler. Uh, you, you remember this table, the offload table. There are lots of functions. 
uh, call the offload handler, one of the handler have a problem and uh, it's a pre auth friend handler <coughs> uh, handle the OAT. Uh, what is pre auth? Uh, pre auth means you don't have to connect to a specified access point. You don't have to connect to connect to a host port. You just uh, turn on the Wi-Fi, the then the uh, phone is vulnerable. Okay, it's a pre auth vulnerability. Okay, uh, this is the uh, vulnerability code. I will transfer translated it into the C code. Uh, it's a straightforward. You can see this loop and. Uh, uh, this load check about the length and uh, we are copy as much of data into the uh, destination. Uh, we are copy copy. It's a uh, uh, endless loop if you have enough data. Okay. This is the uh, vulnerability. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So let's check uh, the data around the overflow address. You can see it will overflow from here global buffer and uh, uh, if you want to uh, copy all case 44 data into each, each item from here the group of buffer into here you can see 44 bytes of data 44 44 uh, it's, a, it's a loop okay you know this is a global buffer in the global static area so the address we, we already know because there is no SLR, the meditation table, you, you remember? There is no SLR, so we know the address of the uh, uh, overflow data. So it's very convenient for us to explore it. Okay. We can analyze the uh, data around the overflow address. We can analyze the data here. And uh, uh, quickly, we can find out the after set C is a very useful data. It's a very useful function, uh, data pointer, pointer to uh, uh, something we can leverage uh, to do some useful job. We call it the smart pointer. And using the vulnerability, we can overwrite this smart pointer, overwrite, overwrite the content of this pointer. Okay? See how we use the smart pointer. We can send out a package and uh, uh, goes into this this code flow to use the override at data. You can see this is a smart point we override so we can we can change it to our destination we are interested in. And uh, uh, if we call into this code flow finally we will override these two bytes uh, actually the three bytes C D and the fourteen we are overwrite these three bytes, okay. Let's see the detail. We overwrite the smart point uh, using the vulnerability and it will uh, have two tests. The first test is to test our destination equal to one and the second test is to test the smart point plus six equal to the mark address of the sender. And finally, if the two tests pass, it will write to the uh, three bytes using the data from the OTA packet. Uh, this is uh, the data we control and send. And the MAC address is also we control and send. So the only constraint is that if we pa bypass this, this, this check, we can write arbitrary code to the destination we are interested in. So we can Overwrite something like a function point, a data point, or other thing we are interested in to do the job. Okay. So we have a, a global write write primitive. So we can write to anywhere we want if we can bypass this check. Okay. So for example, uh, we overwrite the smart point to this address x x x. And uh, the noise the bit is one, so we can bypass the check here. Uh, we can we can bypass the check here, okay. And uh, then we can write to the offset C, uh, uh, 5678. You can see here. We can write a C and a D, 
that is uh, six, uh, five, six, seven, eight. We can write to here. We can use, we call it the primitive global write with constraint. Okay. You can write to anywhere if the noise the bit is one set up. Uh, so, uh, meaningful address or data is always four bytes. So, how to write four bytes? The answer is quite simple. We just uh, use the write trace. The first time on the node two bytes, you know, the five, six, seven, eight, and uh, the second time we move, move the smart point of, uh, forward after the byte two, and uh, this one, this byte is, this bit is still uh, one. We can write one, two, three, four, then that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight, <coughs> uh, that is four bytes, and uh, there is still another problem. You see, you want to write to here um, five, uh, six, and uh, uh, the problem is this bit is not not uh, equal to one. So how to solve this problem? You can set thirty up, and if this is one, then we can use the group write to modify this 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 bit. Okay, we can set up, set up it to one. Then we can write to the target. So this is the method we use. So for this complex figure, actually, we want to control the PC and Arduino. Uh, Arduino, we have uh, uh, eight bytes. The first four bytes is the PC, and the uh, second is Arduino. But <coughs> we search up from on the memory and find this place that we can writeable and readable by our remote packet. Okay. Then you see there are a lot of one, lot of one. We can move move the smart point forward, move one, move one, more, and then we can overwrite the target PC and the other. Okay. So we have control the PC and other. Uh, we can mm, we can then run some FOP to do some complex job, such as to run into the. Uh, FOP and uh, mapping the RWX page. This is to map some page to uh, modify the code segment. Uh, for example, uh, this is a t code segment B zero zero, and uh, uh, originally mapping from uh, nine three six. Uh, we wanted to want to write the code segment, so we using the FOP to uh, map it to four two four two. Uh, using this uh, for FOP, so now we can uh, write to the code segment, and uh, uh, we can write to we have a uh, arbitrary write, so we can copy copy our shell code into the into the code space and uh, trigger it. You can see we copy the shell code. The shell code is originally in the data packet, so we copy. It the data packet data into the destination that is 4242. Then we trigger, trigger this function. Okay. So now we have running our arbitrary code in the WLAN. Actually, we have now in the WLAN, okay, we are going to the modern. Hmm. Uh, the WLAN is the different uh, process in the best band with modern. Okay. You can see the kernel is the QURT OS and uh, the WLAN and the modern is the uh, process in the running in the user space. So how to get into the WLAN uh, uh, into the modern from the WLAN? There are dangerous actions such as modify the code segment uh, and uh, write uh, modern data or call complex functions uh, but the uh, uh, or illegal. Uh, you, if you call, uh, if you do these dangerous actions, the baseband subsystem you are crashing. Okay, but you remember you can map memory. So how about we map the modern memory directly into the WLAN? Okay, just like this, we map the modern um, memory from on the WLAN. Okay, it's a memory map. We just map the physical memory into the WLAN virtual address, and then we can modify the memory content. Okay. 
So we can modify the code of the modem. So we are control the modem. Okay. So the last step is to escape him from the modem into the Linux kernel. Okay. This is the load map we are going to do. Okay. There are a lot of attack surfaces. So if you are interested, you can read the value paper for detailed information. Okay. Uh, this is the issue. Uh, the CVE uh, 2019 and 105.3.8, which has already been fixed in the August Android security briefing, uh, you can see there is a check from the data pa pack coming from the modern. Okay. Uh, what's this doing? Uh, actually, it's about the memory management of Qualcomm multiprocessor. Uh, it's a very big topic, uh, in fact, uh, about, the, about the memory management. So it's a simplified figure. Uh, there are two things you need to know. The first thing is uh, the Linux master model. That means the whole system, uh, the memory of the whole system is management by the Linux kernel. Uh, so the peripheral such as um, Venus, modern WLAN, or, or Bluetooth, other, other peripheral subsystems, the mem memory is uh, all management by the, by, the, by the Linux kernel. And the Linux kernel will uh, use the SMMU to or protect the uh, memory. For example, if the modern owns, owns this, this memory, uh, every time, and um, other, other peripheral, such as we not visit this uh, DRAM. The SMMU will check the uh, permission and uh, uh, find out that uh, the Windows data has this, this permission and then the whole system is down. So this is the two things you uh, remember is the Linux, uh, Linux master mode and SMMU to protect the uh, memory. So the problem is here. Uh, in fact, uh, it's a uh, mystery lo logic. Generally, Linux will decide the address and decide to uh, assign to other peripheral sub subsystems. But here, you can see the address and the size are determined by the modern. Uh, uh, we don't know why, but uh, if the modern send out the address to Linux, then Linux will use this address directly and use the SAS directory. So uh, if we insert the address to the code address of Linux, so the address will be, uh, the, so the address will be uh, mapped into modern, and then modern can modify the code address of, of the Linux kernel, and that is the issue, okay. So now we are actually in the, in the Linux kernel, so we are going to talk about how to send out the payload. Uh, actually, uh, before we are using the SCAPI and uh, Wi-Fi dongle, but it's not, not very stable. So finally, we are using a Pixel 2 to send out the payload and uh, using a Pixel 2 to attack the Pixel 2 XL. So you can see the Pixel 2 send out uh, Wi-Fi payload and uh, then Pixel 2 XL we have received the payload and uh, been uh, compromised. Okay, this is the whole roadmap. We are using Pixel 2 send out this, and uh, finally, we from modern into the Linux kernel. Okay, into WLAN, into modern, and into Linux kernel. Okay. Uh, let's uh, use. Um, The demo is here. Uh, can, can you see? Okay. Uh, uh, this is on the left uh, is the pixel, pixel two. Uh, it is, it is send, sending out a, a package. Send on the payload to attack the, the left is the Pixel 2 XL. Okay, you can see it's a version of the system. 
Okay. So the whole process in the, about three minutes. Can see. Uh, now we are we are in the shell and uh, the <coughs> needs to con uh, SE Linux is enforcing. So we have no permission for, and to do the uh, dangerous things such as the message. Okay. So it is still sending out payload payload and uh, let's let's speed up. Speed up. Speed up. So the SE Linux is still enforcing, you know. Enforcing. So the Pixel 2 is still sending out payload. Okay. It's uh, it's about three minutes. Okay. Okay. So it's probably done. Okay. Okay. See. I wait for about one minute. And you can see finally we have get into the Linux kernel and uh, disable the SC Linux. So uh, now okay, we can read the D message. So actually we are running arbitrary code in the Linux kernel from the mo remote WLAM. Okay. Uh -huh. oh, thank you. Uh, So time it up, and uh, um, we note this these issues have already been fixed uh, in the August bulletin and the pack. Uh, you can see the detailed information here. And today we talk about how to remotely into into the kernel from the OTA package uh, into WLAN and the modern the four four chain and the vulnerability and the exploitations and the best band subsystem. So thanks very much for your time. Thanks very much. Okay.